Alright, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744, and today I'm joined Brandon Blanco. Uh, and thank you for Brandon for joining this, man. And we're going to be talking about the AFC World Cup qualifiers. And we're going to be discussing about how we feel about each of the groups, you know, match day, match day four, and go through all that. And it should be fun, man. Thank you, Brandon, for coming on, man. It's been a while since we've had you on. I think the last time you came on was for the international debates, if, I, if, if I'm mistaken. Well, it's great for having me, Ad. I appreciate for yeah, I appreciate you having me here. I, and I can yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll give our quick thoughts. We're obviously not gonna go into detail because you know we, we have we have eighteen games to discuss. So we're gonna give our quick thoughts at each of the games. We'll try to make this around thirty to forty minutes. So let's start with the first game, which we got here is Uzbekistan nil, Iran nil. Um, I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. Very brief. There's not really much to say about this game. I thought Uzbekistan for me were very disappointing, um, and it's it's a, it's a shame to me because even with down a man Iran for like large parts of the second half, Uzbekistan still only created one shot on target. That's crazy. And Iran, I can't really criticize Iran for because obviously they went down a man, so they'll be defensive. But you know what the weird thing is? I think Iran might have actually been better off without the, with the red card. <laughs> that seems yeah. messed up. To say. That seems yeah. messed up. To say. Uh, yeah, I, 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 oh, yeah. Go ahead, so, go ahead. Actually, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I wanted to finish up real quick. But yeah, I mean, and then obviously Iran had a penalty there at the end. Uh, there was a penalty appeal, which wasn't given, which was kind of surprising because I actually thought that was a penalty. But, you know, referee didn't give it. And yeah, Uzbekistan, man, they're good defensively. My man, their attack is so poor. And kind of like the same with Iran, too. Is like they're good defensively. My goodness me, that attack is very poor for Iran. So, but I'm not going to be too critical of Iran because they were down it, man. So what's your thoughts on this game, man? Yeah, I saw that game. Uh, there wasn't really not uh, nothing much to say going on. No going because kind of like what you kind of like what you said. Uzbekistan, they're good defensively, but I feel like I feel like they need like a like a midfielder that can that can pass to the to the attack because Uzbekistan they have good attackers. It's just they need. It's just I feel like they they lack like. Um, like someone, um, like a CDM or a or a midfielder that can that can control the ball and pass them. And then as for Iran, kind of like what you said, I felt they defended well, um, and they did, and they actually played better even without even with a, with a man down. So, yeah, nothing much. Nothing much of note happened, and yeah, it was a boring draw. But I don't blame Iran. Yeah, yeah. Anyone blame Iran? You're just stupid, man. And man, yeah, that's actually. I mean, just look at the stats. Just saying, now Iran had four shots on target, even down a man is crazy. So that, yeah. that just shows man. Iran, man. If it was Uzbekistan, man. It's like obviously it was Uzbekistan. Obviously, I understand their main aim is to qualify for the World Cup, which is obviously understandable. But I'm what I'm saying is that I feel like we're gonna get some of the other teams in a quick bit. I feel like for Uzbekistan, man, if they really want to make a deep run the World Cup, they have to beat the big team. They have to beat the big teams, you know. Not yeah. just simply just to play the draw against the big teams is not going to be good for them in the long term. It may be good for them short term, but yeah. And also another one last thing to mention is that these two teams just can't. These two teams just will never get a winner. <laughs> like the last three times, <laughs> it's been a draw. This it's crazy. That's crazy, but yeah. I'm looking at the head to head here, like nil nil, two two draw. So, yeah, man, just craziness there. But yeah, not really much to speak of. Uh, let's move to the next one. So we're gonna do, we're gonna go in by group by group, um, and then we'll go into that. So the next match. Uh, so what's the next match we got here? The next one. It was the Tajikistan. No, no, sorry, Kyrgyzstan, Qatar. Why would I? Why did I, think... I say Tajikistan? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's let's start with match day. Okay, wait, actually, I'm going back. Here we go. Wait. Oh, okay, so they actually did this way. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, Qatar, Kyrgyzstan, right? Yeah. Um, This was a good win for Qatar, a much-needed win. You know, Qatar up at this point haven't won a game, so they got this win here, which is massive for them. And for Ky Kyrgyzstan, as I said, not really a whole lot to say. I thought they did the best they could. It's just I, I just don't think Kyrgyzstan have enough quality, to be honest with you. And I think Qatar were electric with their attack. Almost Ali... Uh, Saan scored the goal, own goal there. And yeah, I think Qatar just kind of cruise controlled this game. And for um, Kyrgyzstan, man, really bad defending there, especially for the center back. He made a bad a bad own goal there defense, defensively. And it feels like the goals that Qatar scored were like, they were crossing the, a lot of crosses into the box. So 
Yeah, man, for Qatar, man, good win for them. But my big concern with Qatar is the defense, which we'll, we'll get on to later because that defense was bad in particular one game. But we'll, we'll speak about that when we get there. So what's your thoughts on this game, Brandon? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I kind of felt that uh, Qatar, basically, they controlled from start to finish, kind of like what you were saying. Like, the first half, they scored the first goal. Um, yeah, I mean, the mistake by Kyrgyzstan and in the second half, I mean, Qatar just, you know, just cruise control. I think for me, Kyrgyzstan, they're more of a home merchants type of type of team that they only do well well at home but not good away. So, yeah, I mean, defensively still a liability for Qatar, but I feel like defensively for Kyrgyzstan, they are, they are a liability away, especially away, so, yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah, shout out to Qatar, man. Almost Ali, and I don't know how Afif got the man in the match when he didn't even get a goal or an assist, which is kind of weird, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So I guess yeah, I guess he had a good game. Actually, I, actually, let me just go to his player profile real quick. I just want to see. So, yeah, yeah, okay, forty-one passes, six shots. Okay, I guess he had a lot of shots, so I guess he had a good game. Um, but yeah. Moving on, next we have is UAE one, North Korea one, and then we'll talk about the table uh, after each group is done. We'll give you a quick thoughts. Man, I don't know how North Korea didn't win this game. <laughs> I'm going to start by saying this right now. North Korea were my far the better team against UAE. And if it wasn't for this goalkeeper, Ayese, who is one of the best goalkeepers in Asia, North Korea would have won this game because they squandered so many chances this game. And then their penalty there, uh, and then UAE score at there against the run of play, Yahi Al Ghassani coming off the bench. And then you North, North Korea had a chance to equalize. It was a golden opportunity, a penalty there from Kwang So Young. <laughs> Misses the penalty, and uh, then B Gon Jong, I mean Yi Two Gon Jong scored the equalizer. It was interesting. Both players that scored in the day were substitutes. <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, yeah. For UE man, I, I don't know what to say with this team because this team man, oh my jeez, their attack is so underwhelming, and I I still don't understand Paulo Bento. What what's the deal, man? Why are you not using Ali McQueen? I know you haven't fallen out, but I think you need to get you need to get over it because you're 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 hurt. I think UE is being affected by this, you know. And so for North Korea man, I feel bad for them because honestly, I feel like they should have gotten. I I feel like they should have won this game. To be honest with you, so I mean, do you agree with me, man? Yeah, I. Uh... Uh, North Korea, they need to improve their pens because I don't know what are they're training, but th they need to learn how to improve their pens. Because oh yeah, kind of like point. what kind of like kind of like what happened in that game against Uzbekistan. North Korea had a chance to to draw the game, and then in this one, they could have had the opportunity to not only get one point but take all three points away from in Dubai, so or whatever. Yeah, but huge. Whatever they played in, that would have been a huge, uh, that would have been a huge result for them, um, if they want to make it to round four. But yeah, North Korea were the better team, but UAE somehow got somehow got the got the points. Yeah, and um, I want to quickly mention: Do you think UAE needs to move on from Paulo Bento, or do you think he should be? Because I heard some fans say that maybe Paulo Bento needs to go. Well, what do you think? I feel like it's kind of like a combination of both. I feel like it's probably maybe the talent of the UAE. It has the talent pool has downgraded quite a lot, where not even Paulo Vento can can even fix it. So I feel it's a combination of both. Although I'm not I'm not an expert on U Emirati football, so I mean, yeah. But based on what I've seen, I feel like the it's sad how the UAE have have falling off little by little yeah I, I feel like as my as far as my opinion i feel like it's it would be a bit reactionary i would say because i feel like um you still have more of the qualifiers to go now i will say this though if you we don't reach the like let's say like they're they're potentially going to miss a playoff round oh then he has to go for sure because with all due respect you should begin the playoff round they should be they finishing should. yeah but um, if they're like, let's say, mathematically out, or let's say not in contention anymore, or on the danger of missing out, then maybe do it. But until then, I don't think you should do it because I looked at UE's next fixtures. They got Kyrgyzstan, Qatar at home, uh, Kyrgyzstan at home, and I believe Qatar away, if I'm not mistaken. So it, it's a ma the, the, like that's a huge window for them, and I think it's a it will be favorable to them. I think these kind of games are a bit tough, but I think the next set of games will we'll see how they do. But yeah, um, it's gonna be yeah. interesting. 
All right, moving and let's get back and let's finish up Group A. Um, we're just gonna, I just want to get through. I just want to do um, group by group. They go and then go by you know match day because I, I just feel like it would be it would be easier this way, you know. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's start with this one, man. Kyrgyzstan won North Korea nil, man. Kyrgyzstan finally getting a win, a massive win indeed, and it was a good win, man. Good win coming from the goal from Brosman. Good goal there in the first half, and yeah, North Korea, man. It's weird with North Korea is because I feel like at times they're a very inconsistent team because they had a, such a good performance against UAE away in which they were very unlucky to not win the game. But in this game, they were very, very poor. Very poor. Not even a single shot in the first half. The second half, sure, they had more chances. They had more shots to start, but they didn't really create any genuine opportunities. And Kyrgyzstan kind of sat back. North Korea were trying to push for the equalizer, but they couldn't. And that's how the game finished. So, I mean, what do you think, man? Do you think North Korea is inconsistent? Do you agree with me? Yeah. I, I, I kind of see your points. I feel like North Korea, they have moments of brilliance and then mo moments of not, not so brilliant moments. And we saw, it, we saw it in this game as well, where I thought that North Korea had plenty of chances and they just couldn't, they just couldn't, they just couldn't, couldn't take advantage of them. I mean, I mean, and I feel like that's, that might be their downfall. Like, like missing those big opportunities from what I've saw from North Korea and Kyrgyzstan, kind of like what I've said, they defend well. They know how to play at home. And yeah, I mean, it's a massive three points for Kyrgyzstan, but disappointing for North Korea. I thought they should have drawn. Yeah. Then I think you make a good point. North Korea is not clinical enough. I think that's a big takeaway from this. Is that and these two games, they didn't convert. They weren't able to convert their chances, despite how much better they were against UE, and despite the amount of chances they had in this game. Because as good as Kyrgyzstan were, Kyrgyzstan were good in this game. Obviously, Kyrgyzstan weren't that great in the second half. I think the second half was there for North Korea to take advantage of and get the equalizer. And a draw away in Kyrgyzstan would have been massive for them. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. And Kyrgyzstan got the uh, three points, man. And now. Uh, now they got a win here, and they got their first points on the table, man, which is massive for them. Uh, let's talk about uh, the next one we got here is Uzbekistan, won UAE nil. Kind of like Uzbekistan, man. They're, they're just doing the bare minimum. They're doing the bare minimum, honestly. And they got the goal there from Shukurov, the, uh, the goal scorer, which was interesting because I thought Shomorodov would take the penalty, but it wasn't him, which was surprising. And, um, yeah, you, you, Uzbekistan played pretty uh, – they weren't really that great in this game. I actually thought UAE were probably better, but – UE just couldn't convert their chances, and Yusuf, Yusupov had, him, had a good game and goal. And UE, man, maybe the red card kind of changed the game. Because from that point on, Uzbekistan started to amp up, you know, how many gained that red card, which was a very reckless foul. And then obviously handball at the edge of the box. Ashokov gets a, scores a goal there. So, I mean, what's your thoughts on this game, man? I, I'm wondering for Uzbekistan, is, Bur it's coach, is Coach Bides coaching – Uzbekistan because <laughs> kind of like what you were saying, they're kind of doing the bare minimum and and while it might help them qualify for the World Cup, I feel like it might not it's not gonna help them if they go to the World Cup where they might not get out of this group. But in terms of the game, first half, I don't think there was nothing of significance. There wasn't nothing much going on for both of them. Maybe maybe UAE they they kind of deserved it more. They were kind of attacking. But then after the red card, as what you said in the second half, Uzbekistan, they started to take it. They became a little bit more urgent and obviously the handball. And then, yeah, I feel like kind of like what you said, Uzbekistan, they kind of, they're not too clinic. They're, they're not too clinical when it comes to attacking. They're defensively well, but they can't, they can't attack. They can't score yeah. for their lives. Yeah, that's for sure, man. And for Uzbekistan, man, this is a massive for them because it's a massive win at home, and they kind of do the bare minimum, as we said. And now we're talking about the Iran Qatar, man. I saved this game for last for a reason because this was probably the most probably the most interesting game in Group A. Qatar took the early lead, and I was thinking to myself, no, oh my geez, is Qatar really going to beat Iran away in Iran? I was getting kind of concerned there. And uh, Ali scored a, a goal there, kind of a lucky goal, you could kind of say, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and then, obviously, Osmo scored a great goal there, 42nd minute. That was a great banger. And then the 48th minute, that was one of the – guys, I'm going to say this right now. That might be one of the worst goals I've seen conceded in my life. 
that was such a terrible mistake there from the goalkeeper Barsha. Uh, then Mohibi, man, counterattack the goal there, the 65th minute, and then the 95th minute header. And Iran could have scored like two or three more goals because there were several times where Iran scored, but it was disallowed. Iran were all over Qatar. Qatar were dreadful defensively. And Iran, man, they finally showed up. They finally got a huge win. Like, I've been waiting to see Iran get a huge win. I, I feel like it's been a long time since we've seen that. So, yeah, for Iran, man, massive win for them. Osman turning up. It's also huge because I haven't seen – because I don't remember the last time Osman turned up. Usually it's been Taremi that's been there or John Bakash. But it was actually Osman that came clutch. And, you know, and, and this is a player that, you know, I- Iranian fans have been crying out for so long. Team Meli fans in particular. And he finally delivered, man, Mohibi as well. So, yeah, what's your thoughts on this game, man? Uh, just wanted to clarify, they weren't playing in Iran. They were playing in Dubai because of... Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, and Osman was, playing, Osman was playing in his home, in his backyard. So basically, because oh, wow. the stadium <laughs> is where Osman plays. And yeah, I mean, Iran were dominant. I mean, they wanted it more. And Qatar, I'm I'm wondering if they're... If, if they go to the the school of school of China because the fans, they were just bad. They were just, especially the second goal where like, what, yeah, on, second earth, goal was really bad. what on earth was the goalkeeper doing? And it should, I think the score, it should have been like six to one, seven to one. Like, but it's just, again, Qatar were bailed out by the offside. And so, I mean, I've never seen Iran dominant quite like this and so i haven't seen them in a while so i mean fair play to iran so yeah yeah so let's look let's look ahead real quick so this is how group a is panning out so i i would say the group a is kind of shaping out um kind of how i expect i'm a bit surprised that qatar is this bad i thought qatar would be third or uh third at least because i actually predicted iran who expects them to do and i think it's i think it's pretty safe to say brandon that iran who expects them are going to make the world cup i'm, I'm pretty Confident, well, especially with Iran. Uzbekistan, maybe not, because Qatar do have to play against Uzbekistan, but I think Qatar have to win that game. So, I mean, how do you, do you agree with me that this is kind of how you think the group is going to pan out? I'm fairly confident that Iran will qualify to the World Cup. Um, I kind of was a little bit worried about them because I feel like Iran is in a slight decline, but even then, I still think they will still qualify, although how they'll play in the World Cup, that is yet to be determined as for Uzbekistan, well, time. Um, as for Uzbekistan um, they still have to play Qatar away and then I believe they're playing against North Korea away in the next game so we'll see how they play but um, yeah I mean let's see how they play away and then as for the, as for as for North Korea it's disappointing I expected them more from them and yeah, we'll see what happens. Qatar, I'm extremely disappointed in. I'm extremely disappointed in Qatar and the UAE as well. So I'm fairly surprised with Tajikistan as well, given how nobody thought they would get many points. So they got three points. So yeah. Yeah, you mean Kyrgyzstan, by the way. Kyrgyzstan, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because you know, the thing is between the Uzbeks and Qatar is that I, I think the difference is that Uzbeks are good defensively. Qatar isn't, but Qatar's attack is good. Qatar's attack is pretty solid, I would say. Uzbeks' attack isn't really that great compared to Qatar. So that game, Uzbeks and Qatar could make a difference. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. But I, yeah, like, like you said, man, I think top two is like, I'm almost settled. I'm like 95% sure. But I think that third to fourth, because as much as I think you and Qatar should do it, Kyrgyzstan and North Korea are not far behind. They're only one and two points behind, respectively. So it's going to be a tight race for that third and fourth position, I would say. So, yeah. Let's move to Group B, man. Group B time. Let me update my timestamp here. So, Group B. All right. Let's start with Group B. Let's start with – um, which game should we start with? Let's start with um, – let's start with Iraq 1, Palestine now. Let's talk about this game first. Good win for Iraq at um, home um, against Palestine. It was a good goal there for Hamid Hussein. Great ball over the top. And, yeah, that's how it finished, man. And for Iraq, as I said, man, are they relying too much on Hussein? Because I'm starting to feel like they are. I'm starting to feel like they are. And Palestine, they defended well. But Iraq, man, they just kind of – I mean, it was just kind of an underwhelming win for Iraq. Obviously, I know they got the win, but 
I mean, look at this, man. Six shots, two on target. I mean, with the quality of players the Iraq have, I kind of expect more. I mean, you have Jassim, Gaiin, Baish, Atawan. Like, I expect more from them, you know? So, I mean, what, what do you think, man, Brandon? Yeah, um, I did watch briefly the game. Um, yeah, I feel like Iraq, to me, they scream more of a home merchant type of team because um, I don't know if I read this. I don't know if I read this prompt, this fact, but um, they have a long streak of not losing at home. And so, but kind of like what you're saying, um, yeah, Palestine, they defended, you know, okay. Um, and then Iraq, I mean, yeah, I feel like they're kind of, they're kind of like relying on Ayman Hussein too much. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was an underwhelming win. It wasn't convincing, but yeah. Yeah, but at the end of the day for Iraq, man, I think I think their goal is kind of like we were saying with Uzbekistan is that we just want to qualify for the World Cup. We don't care how good the performances are; we just want to qualify. <laughs> you know, yeah. so they're kind of like they're kind Basically. of doing the bare minimum, in my opinion. Yeah, they're kind of like the same, in my opinion, for Palestine. And I forgot to mention this: their first choice goalkeeper didn't play, which is um a shame. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I believe he's probably injured at the moment. I forgot his name at the top of my head, but um, I know he's I know he's injured probably. Okay, so yeah. let's move to the next one. We go. Let's move to the next one. Now, this result surprised me. Oman for Kuwait nil. Oman, man. <laughs> this, this, in my opinion, of all the Group B results, this, this might be the most shocking. Like, and maybe in, of all the qualifiers in match day three and four, like Oman for Kuwait nil because we saw how good Kuwait were in particular against like uh, Iraq at Iraq, which was pretty impressive. Um, and then obviously, uh, I think Kuwait they played against. I forgot who they played against. I think they played Jordan. against. Jordan. They yeah, they got, two, they got a draw. They got a draw there. So this kind of came out of nowhere. Oman, man. Shout out to Oman. Ali Mashifuri. Um, hopefully I'm not butchering his name, by the way. He scored a brace on the day. And the Faiz came off the bench, scored a goal. And uh, and the, 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 who was the other goal scorer? Um, uh, Gassani, Gassani, Gassani or something. Gass yeah, Gal Gassani scored a goal. And yeah, for Kuwait, man, I was just shocked at how bad they were. Oman just cruise controlled this one. And it's a huge win for Oman. So... What do you have to say about this, man? I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, you know, I felt like Kuwait, they made Oman look like a prime Germany, basically. <laughs> like, the defense, their defense, I'm like, what on earth are Kuwait doing? I mean, oh, and I think this was the debut of their Omani coach. I forgot his name, Jave or something oh. like that. Um, so yeah. I guess that's kind of like, that's kind of like, I, 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 yeah, I mean, Kuwait just made them look extraordinary and, and I'm really surprised on that result because you don't expect Kuwait to score at least more than two goals, let alone a goal. I feel like they're, they're kind of like a boring side in Asia. I'm not going to lie. The most boring side in Asia. And so to put four past Kuwait, um, who are, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I, it's very impressive by Kuwait. I'm oh, sorry, by Oman. So oh, yeah, Oman. yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah, Kuwait man. I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing, no words to disc I have nothing to say at all. It was just quite shocking. Yeah, shout to this. Yeah, Al Mashafi man. He doesn't have a player profile, which is so sad. <laughs> it's so sad of football. Football out of face for this guy, man. Out of face, man. It's sad. <laughs> and yeah, they're off with their midfielders, their fullbacks cooked. And um, yeah, I mean, it's amazing win for Oman, and I, I, it definitely caught me off guard because, like I said, I think this might be the most shocking result because I don't think anybody had this in the cards. Um, so yeah, for Kuwait, they were awful defensively, horrendous. All right, and then let's talk about this game, man. Jordan nil, South Korea two, man. Ah, uh, Jordan, man. Very disappointing. Now, I understand that, obviously, your best player, al Remy wasn't available, and obviously, al Nemit wasn't fully fit for this game. But, I mean, I understand, and to be fair, but at the same time, South Korea also have Son missing, too. So, it's not like South Korea, like, they didn't have injuries as well. Well, to be fair, I think Son was the only injury. But still, like, Jordan, for me, man, I was very disappointed how they were in the particular this game. Like, defensively, they were really bad. And South Korea, man, I had to get credit to them, and I was impressed at how good they were because I remember when South Korea in the September fixtures, they were very, like, kind of, like, just getting by, you know, just doing the bare minimum, uh, you know, individual brilliance kind of saving them here. And this game, though, it was complete domination. South Korea were the better team. Great cross there from Sewell. Great header there from Lee. 
Um, I believe Lee scored the first goal, right? Yeah. No, so, yeah, Lee scored the goal, scored the first goal, and the second goal was a bad mistake from the old, for, um, from, um, was it from Jordan? And then, yeah, it was a great goal there, the second goal. And, yeah, just Jordan just didn't look any, like, hopes to score it in. Obviously, I understand that Al Terme wasn't available, and obviously, Al Terme wasn't fully fit, but still. And it, it kind of does make me wonder that is Jordan kind of relied on these two players, Al Terme, Al Terme, is that, like, they're very important. Um, yeah, with, with that game, um, I kind of, I kind of looked at it, Jordan, and I'm like, I kind of feel like they're relying too much on Al Naimat and, and Altamari. Um, and I know them because, um, I am playing them on FM. And so, yeah, it was very disappointing for Jordan. It was quite disappointing. They allowed South Korea to basically dominate them in their, in their backyard, which, I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of like what you're saying about South Korea, um, in the September window, they were kind of like coasting through, they were just, they are just relying on individual talent, but in this game, I mean, South Korea, they did what they had to do, and they got three important points in Amman, so, yeah. Yeah, I want to ask you a quick question before we move to the next one. Is this impressive to do without Son Hoon Min, or you think you don't think it's really impressive? I mean, it was a result that I expected. I'm not gonna lie. I did, I did predict it a draw um, for both of them, um, a draw. But yeah, even without Son, South Korea, they still, they still, they still looked impressive. They look, I mean, with the new coach. So yeah, we'll see how it goes for the next window. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to South Korea for getting them win there on the road, man. Uh, then we're going to move to the, the the next game which you got here. It is um so we're going to go into the next sub, set of games. So let's start with the uh Jordan for Oman nil. So coming go back to Jordan, man. So Jordan was like, you know what? We're going to hold. We're going to advance. We're going to show that we're the real deal, and we scored four goals against Oman, which is crazy because Oman had just come off here with a four 0 win. So you're thinking of some how is it like you know? And Jordan actually won this game four 0 It was a complete domination. Alan Nemec was so amazing. Oman was a fantastic. And for Jordan, as I said, man, they're looking very good offensively. Offensively, looking very good. And for as for Oman, they were awful defensively. They were making so many bad mistakes throughout the back, clumsy challenges. And Jordan could have probably scored more than four goals. Like there was a lot of chances Jordan missed in this game. Like they scored, could have scored five or six goals. And four four nil is like kind of flattering to say to say to Oman. Honestly, what do you have to say, man? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of I I was like wondering. Wow, really? Um, uh, all of a sudden, now, now the tape, now the role switch. Now it was Jordan who, uh, well, all nine month was back, and so I think that definitely helped Jordan. That that helped Jordan. Um, yeah, for sure. I felt like they they needed they needed all nine month back, and then Ali all one. Obviously, he scored a brace in in second half. If I'm not mistaken, cool. Yeah, yeah, Oman, yeah, yeah. Like, so, yeah. They were just. Oman, they were just defensively, they're just defensively bad. Kind of like against, kind of like with Kuwait against Oman. Oman were defensively just bad, um, and they they even have just three shots on target. They they only had just three shots in total, only one. So they didn't even let them go beyond their half. So I mean, it was it was domination by Jordan, completely domination. Yeah, for, completely dominant. Yeah, for, yeah for Jordan, man, it's gonna make that um. It's gonna make it's gonna make things interesting. So shout out to Jordan for getting the win, and they had actually had less possession too, which was also weird too as well. But you know, at the end of the day, possession doesn't matter. It's about the goals of the day. And so shout out to Jordan, man. Al Nemed was fully fit, and I think he is so important to this team. He is like this. So, he's like their probably the, one of their most important players. And yeah, shout out to him, man. Uh, then we're gonna talk about this no game. No doubt man. about it. Palestine, Palestine two, Kuwait two. This was a crazy game, end to end game. Obviously, Kuwait got the early penalty there from Nasser. Great penalty there. And then Ali scored the penalty there. And you're thinking, it's okay, it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, then, terrible challenger from Saldana. Saldana gets a second yellow card. And you know what's weird? Even when Palestine were down, man, I actually thought they were better. I actually thought Palestine were better. And then Kuwait had the chance the second half. Great cross in um, the second half. Uh, that was a great goal there from Nasser. And then Palestine continued to fight, fight, fight. And Gunbar come, scores the equalizer at the right at the end. And he uh and he makes a two two great header that is from Palestine and they had the goalkeeper Hamadeh back 
which is important to him because he he's obviously um, a better goalkeeper than whoever the backup is. And yeah, so for Palestine, man, like I said, it's a good result given the fact that we're a man down, but I really do feel like this was a winnable game. Like, I don't think Kuwait were that great. I mean, what do you think, man? Yeah, I mean, I mean I've mean, i had this issue with, with Palestine and like Palestine, I mean, off I mean, defensively, they're like they're very solid, um, but they just don't have a midfielder, and they don't even have an attack. They don't even have someone who can back the goals, and and we saw this a lot where they had plenty of chances, but they just weren't clinical. And I feel like this might be their downfall. And um, as with Palestine, like it's just like they just don't show up in. In, in important moments like these, like their best win was against Bangladesh and um, they couldn't even beat Lebanon. They couldn't even beat Lebanon for starters. So with Palestine, it's just the same old story that like they always fall short in important instances like these. As for Kuwait, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess we, I'm very surprised by them and like at least they're holding their own. Well, other than that, result against Oman, but other than that, I mean, they got three draws. Not bad. Yeah, and I think the thing with Palestine, and I fully agree with you, Palestine, they just, they just have the l mental lapses of concentration. And for Kuwait, uh, I don't know what to make of this team. I feel like this team is just a team where, like, okay, we may not be that good as you guys, but we're going to make it tough to beat. If you're going to beat us, it's going to be tough to beat. Because, honestly, I feel like that Oman result was kind of maybe just a kind of a one-off game. You know, it was just a one-off game. It was just like an anomaly, you know, because Kuwait has we've seen so far in the qualifiers. They made it very difficult. They are very difficult defensively. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to make that battle for fourth place very tough to come down to. It's going to make it very tough. And then the final game we have in Group B, it is South Korea 3, Iraq 2, man. This was a great game. South Korea showing how showing some great momentum here. Great win that for them. And the youngsters balled out, man. Oh, scored the goal there. The 25-year-old scored the goal. And the least scored the goal. Great goal there. And, yeah, coming off the bench, man, Ho jung Yo scored the goal. And, yeah, the youngsters balled out, man. Youngsters balled out. And South Korea looked really good offensively. Um, defensively, they were a bit shaky at times. Um, you know, and shout out to Iraq. Ahmed Hussein scored a bicycle kick there. And the Bayish scored a last-minute goal. And, yeah, man, for Iraq, as I said, though, both teams were not good defensively. And both teams um, had the good attacks. But, ultimately, South Korea's attack was just better on the day than Iraq. So, what do you think of this game in particular, man? It was, it was a good game. It was, like, definitely an awesome game, like, from both sides where both of them wanted to win. But I thought that South Korea were the better side. I mean, obviously, with the three goals, I mean, the young, kind of like what you're saying, the youngsters, you know, they balled out. I mean, it was um, Lee Jae Soong, um, Lee Jae Soong, and then uh Seo oh, or the the striker from South Korea I mean he yeah uh oh and he's, he's young so yeah I I yeah. want to see more from him basically in I I wish he was there in the AFC Asian Cup where I feel like they needed him and then you know with Iraq kind of like what you say I feel like they're relying too much on Ayman Hussein and the, I feel like they're kind of like a home merchants type of type of team where they they like they they'll they'll get the wins at home but away eh, not so much so yeah i mean good good game by south korea and then as for iraq i i feel they should they should worry about the game against jordan that's going to be important so yeah I yeah mean, you know yeah, you know it's yeah. also interesting. Both goalkeepers and they make a single save. <laughs> All the shots on target were goals. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that, that's crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, man, shout out to South yeah. Korea for doing this, man. And yeah, so let's look at the group here. Um, uh, let's look at the group here. So as you can see right here, man. So South Korea, obviously South Korea will qualify. I think that's a, without question. They'll obviously they'll probably top the group. And that second place, man, it's between Jordan and Iraq. It's a two way battle. And part of me think is thinking that maybe whichever team gets a result against South Korea may get that second place. Do you have that agree? Do you agree with me on this or nah? You don't think so? Um, well, that and then whoever wins between each other, like yeah, 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 that's like, true. 
I'm excited to see what's going to happen in June because they're going to face each other in Amman. So that's going to be fireworks. And kind of like what Jack and Michael were saying, they're going to go see the game. So, I mean, I wonder if they're going to really go and show. I, I wonder, are they really going to go and are they're really going to go to Amman and see that fireworks? So, yeah. And then as for the fourth round, it's really honestly between – Oman between anyone can get it honestly it's just it's just whoever gets the most wins out of each other so most likely it's looking like Oman so yeah yeah I, I would I, because the thing is like because remember Jordan Iraq is next month that's gonna be insane that's gonna be fireworks and I'm gonna be so excited for that game I'm so excited for that game that game's gonna be on I'm fire. looking forward to that game yeah yeah that game is gonna be huge so, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's going to be very interesting. And as far as the fourth, the fifth, and sixth, it's a very tough. It's very tough to call because I feel like all three of these teams are kind of around the same level because I think Kuwait, they have shown that they're good defensively. I think Palestine show they have character. And then I think Oman is probably the most balanced. I think Oman can give you the goals and they can give you good defense at times. So it's really tough, though, because I think a fourth place is very difficult to call. It's it's really a flip of a coin, honestly. I feel like all three of these teams are kind of roughly around the same level, huh? So it's going to make that fourth place spot very interesting. But if I had to make a prediction right now at the moment, my original prediction was Palestine, but I'm kind of leaning towards more Oman now, honestly. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning, I'm, towards, I'm, Oman. I'm kind of leaning towards Oman as well. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. And finally, moving to the last group we got here, Group C. We're going to start with this one. I'm going to start with um, Australia um, 3, China 1. We're going to – where is that game? Why is that game not here? Okay, we're just going to go back, I guess. Uh – Let's just go here. All right, let's start with okay. So here we go. Australia three, uh, China one. So I mean, it was a good win for Australia. You know, coming back from behind, obviously, China took the early lead there. Um, it was a great long ball there from Z, but obviously, Australia we're gonna come back to this game. Obviously, China we're gonna sit back and defend. Um, and yeah, Australia got the goal there. Great equalizer from Miller, and then great goal from Goodwin. Whoa, that was a banger goal from Goodwin, by the way. And the third goal in stoppage time. I think Velpi. That should be the minute. goal. That's that should be the goal for the qualifiers. That should yeah, goal the be qualifiers. the qualifiers. Oh, or the Hussein yeah. goal against uh, South Korea. But either one of them, they sh they should be the goal of the qualifiers. Yeah. So I mean, for Australia, man, man. Massive win for them. The first sweat with a new coach, Tony Povich, because obviously he replaced Arm Gra Graham Arnold, which maybe was a little harsh, but to be fair, you know, he did he was there for a long time, so maybe they needed a new coach. So Tony Povich is another coach. And so for Australia, man, massive win for them. And for China's a said, man, I mean, what's there to say? I mean, they're abysmal. Defensively, they're tragic shambles. And for Australia, man, massive win. So what do you have to say about this man game, man? Yeah, in the first half, um, I was like wondering, is it is is it is are we really seeing China somehow getting a, getting something out of Australia, and then yeah, I mean, I mean Australia in the first half they just they they were just they were just missing quite a lot of shots, and then in the second half like they kind of stepped it up, and then you know they got three important points. So I mean, I was telling I was telling in the Asian group chat that. Australia's going to need a statement when win. And while it wasn't maybe, oh, while 3 1 wasn't maybe like a statement win, I mean, they still got the three points. So it's the, it's Popovich first, um, first, first match in charge. So yeah, I'm interested to see how Australia plays on under him. So yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Australia for the win. A good win. It was more regarded the man of the match. So shout out to him. Uh, moving on to the next game we got here. So we're going to talk about which one we're going to talk about next. Actually, we'll save this one for last because that one's the most interesting. Uh, we'll talk about the next one. We're going to talk about Saudi Arabia nil Japan too. So Japan, man, got the win on the road against Saudi Arabia for the first time ever in their history, by the way. It's the first time Japan had actually won away in Saudi Arabia. And for Japan, as I said, man, a great goal to Hukumata, great goal there in Ogawa, man. 81st minute, great set piece there. And Japan were just cruise control and... For Saudi, man, it's just the attack is so bad. This attack is so bad. And Mancini, man, there's going to be a lot of question marks. Roberto Mancini is continuity as a coach. Should he be get sacked? Um, there's a lot of question marks. We'll talk more about that when we get to the Bahrain game. But, yeah, for Japan, as I said, man, great win for them. And uh, for um, Saudi Arabia, man, what is there to say? Very disappointing. So what do you have to say about this game, man? 
Yeah, I mean, kind of like what you kind of like. I don't have kind of like what you're saying. Like it was great win by Japan, great great win away from home, and then as for Saudi Arabia, I mean, I mean, what is there to say about Saudi Arabia? I mean, the league. I feel like the. I feel like. Can we blame the league for signing multi multi millionaire players all at the expense of leaving the Saudi talents rotting in the bench? So I mean, I think we have a lot of questions to ask to Saudi Arabia and the football. So yeah, hey, yeah. So sh- shout out to Japan, man, for the clean for that win, man. And now we get to this game, man. Oh man, the- this game was quite insane. So, there's lots of breakdown for this game. So, we got, let's start with the first, this is the first goal. Great goal from Amaru. Great goal. Individual piece of brilliance. Free kick, actually. It was a free kick, actually. Great goal there. And the Indonesia scored just before halftime with literally the first shot on Tari, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was, I believe it was the first shot on Tari. Yeah, it was. And in the second half, man, Indonesia gets a goal to streak. And the 74th minute, Andrew goes, okay, Indonesia is going to get hold on for a famous win away in Bahrain. But then... The controversy, this is where it gets controversial. Because originally there were six minutes of stoppage time. But the referee added three more minutes to the 99th minute. And Mar Moon scored the equalizer in the 99th minute. And there was uproar on social media saying that this was a disgrace and all this kind of stuff. And it's like controversial. And yeah, man, it's 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 definitely one of the most it's definitely a controversial moment. And yeah, so but you have to get credit to Bahrain. I thought Bahrain played well. On um, the second half, and they got the goal. Mar Moon, man, scored a goal there. And yeah, man, for so for Indonesia, man, it's hard, it's heartbreaking for them because they almost got a win, man. They almost got a win, a win, Bahrain. It would have massive for them. So, what's your thoughts on this game, man? Yeah, I mean, I look, I don't, you know, how many times I look like uh, times. Brandon? Just, um, oh, okay. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. how many. I don't know how many times I watched the game, like the Bahrain Indonesia game, um, I, because a lot of people were saying, "Oh, it was night. They they should have not added it additional stoppage time." While others were saying it was justified because the defense, the Indonesian defense, were time wasting. I'm kind of like nuanced about it because I feel like while it is sad that it is it's. It sucks that Indonesia they they were taking away three points that were valuable. At the end of the day, they had additional chances to score. They just couldn't do it, and so yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's unfortunate for Indonesia. But I mean, they gotta blame them themselves for 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 this. So yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a massive uh, ma- massive point for Bahrain, man. And yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the next game we got here. Uh, next game we got here, it is um, Japan one, Australia one. Um, yeah, for Japan, man, it's kind of unfortunate they didn't win this game because I feel like they were so much better than Australia. Australia were not great this game, uh, but they defended for their lives and everything. And oh my Jesus, just all oh my these stats. <laughs> I don't know how Australia managed to secure a draw here, but um, <laughs> Japan, man. They had so many chances this game. Guachi made a lot of saves. It was interesting. Guachi, uh, I think their goalkeeper Matthew Ryan was benched, which was interesting. Um, so I guess Guachi's been better, and I guess he proved in this game, you know, by keeping uh, Australia in it. And then obviously a terrible mistake there from the center back town Gucci. Uh, the Japan got the equalizer. Bad mistake there from Burgess, but I think that one I can understand. You know, it was a bit of an unfortunate timing there. And Matoma I think was the one that put the cross in, and Japan had a lot of chance in the end. Ito I think had a chance right at the end. But it was straight to the keeper, and that's how it ended, man, for Japan. So kind of unfortunate for their winning streak to snap here against Australia at home. But, you know, they're so unbeaten. I still think Japan will be fine. And for Australia, man, it's a massive point on the road. What's your thoughts on this game, man? Yep. I mean, I mean, Australia, I mean, basically, they kind of crap house they draw, basically, like where they knew that they, they knew that they have to – defend for their lives in Saitama. So, I mean, and then Australia, I mean, they did what they had to do. And as for Japan, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was a bit unfortunate. They had plenty of chances. They they just couldn't concrete them for some reason. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to be too harsh on Japan because obviously 
I think Japan are still going to be cruising into this qualifiers and in Australia. This is a massive point. Massive point. So, yeah. The road, man, on the road. All right, then getting to the last two games we got here. Uh, what's the next game we got here? The next game we're going to talk about here, it is uh, China 2, Indonesia 1, man. China, man, finally gets a win. Finally gets a win at home against Indonesia. And China, man, credit to them, man. Great goal from Abu Ali. Uh, bad mistake there from Patiyama, I believe, is the guy that made the mistake there. And then the second goal was a great goal. A great counterattack there. Great assist there. And Yoenig Zhang scored the goal. And then the uh, consolation goal came from Heye, man. And for Indonesia, man, did they underestimate their opponent? Because I feel like they did. Because I'm looking at this this lineup, man, from Taeyong Shan. Why is Ferdinand benched? Why is Haye benched? And maybe they underestimated China. It's like, you know, China's been so bad so far in the qualifiers. We'll just take it easy. You know, we'll walk. We'll stroll here and get a win here. But I think, but the thing in World Cup qualifiers is that you never underestimate your opponent, even if they're down so bad, especially away from home. So, yep, uh, I think Indonesia should blame the coach. They should blame themselves rather than the ref because there was no ref issues at all. I mean, I watched. Yeah, the this game, game it wasn't. The first goal, it was like, what? What was the the Indonesian goalkeeper? What was the Indonesian defense doing? What was yeah. man? And then in the second one, I mean, brilliance by China. Um, yeah, and then for Indonesia, the score in the 86th minute, but by then it was too little, too late. So, yeah. Yeah, for China, man, it's a and huge for win. China, yeah. For China, it's a huge win. That puts them back into the round four playoffs. So, I mean, are they going to do it? Only time will tell. The only time will tell. And... Indonesia, man, they're going to feel frustrated. Like, look at those nine shots towards our China had literally nothing in the second half. The, the game was there for the taking, man. Even a draw would have been decent for them. But, it, you know, what happened didn't happen. And as I did, the first half basically costed them, essentially. So, yeah. And then the final game we got here, it is Saudi Arabia nil, Bahrain nil. Oh, my Jesus. This was a stinker of a game. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. This was I... a stinker of a game. You know, I was sleeping that game. I was I was sleeping when I was watching it. I I, I took a nap. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it and was, then, oh. and then I had to. Yeah, sorry. But when I watched the game, it was like, oh, it's just Saudi Arabia under Mancini. They're just so underwhelming. Like, like I didn't. I expected like a two-one win for Saudi Arabia because I don't think they're gonna let them. I don't think they're gonna let. Bahrain get something in home and so but yeah I mean it's just underwhelming by Saudi Arabia and Mancini yeah his time his days are numbered in Saudi Arabia yeah bro Saudi Arabia man it's it's crazy because Al Jazari man we were talking about how Saudi maybe Saudi Arabia needs a new pen taker because I'm sorry Al Jazari cannot take pens anymore he cannot take pens I'm sorry he's missed two pens now I think this I think the last one he missed was against Indonesia at home and it costed them this game and for Saudi and for Bahrain, as I said, obviously they went defensive as we had expect as a way team. They're going to go defend for their lives. And for Saudi Arabia, man, you only have yourselves to blame because you're the superior team with all due respect. And Bahrain, they're the inferior team, so they had to do what they had to do. And for Saudi Arabia, man, it just wasn't it. And for Mancini, man, I actually want to ask you: Do you think they need to move on from Mancini, or maybe they should give us some more time? Because I feel like they got to sack him, in my opinion. I feel they should sack him. But I feel like there's much bigger issues than Mancini because kind of like what I was saying, kind of like what I was saying before, um, the Saudi League. I mean, kind of like with the with the players and and how the Saudi League they're signing, you know, foreign nationals, and that that that's all at the expense of the Saudi talented young talented players. And so I feel like it's a combination of both. Where I do think that Mancini should go, but. I don't think Mancini is the real problem for Saudi Arabian football. So, yeah. Yeah, I see. So, I mean, for Saudi Arabia, as I said, man, very disappointing for them. And this is how the group is panning out to be. So, obviously, Japan will automatically qualify. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and then for second to fit, I mean, the second to second, because in my opinion, this is probably the most closely contested group. I think this is probably the most interesting group of the three. Because, honestly, all these teams are around the same. <laughs> Roughly around the same points. I don't think anyone Our, expected this to happen. Yeah. So, I mean, Australia. So I would probably lean towards Australia since Australia. Um, I I think they have more continuity. Uh, but 
for Saudi, as I said, man, they've always directly qualified the last two World Cups. So, I mean, and I did hear that Saudi Arabia might get Harvey Renard back. Now, if they get Harvey Renard back, then I might have to change my prediction. But until they do, I, I don't I don't see Saudi directly qualifying, honestly, especially with their home form. And you know what's crazy, Brandon? I believe they're the only team in, in this third round that didn't score a goal. No way. That's insane. That's I believe they are. I mean, point, I, one point out of the possible six points for Saudi Arabia, that's disappointing. Even China got more points than Saudi Arabia. Even, even China, China scored a goal today. That's that's completely unacceptable by Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So, I mean, do you agree with me that Australia are the slight favorites to a second place, or you are still going Saudi? Uh, I think that Australia are the slight favorites. I mean, obviously, it's because of Mancini and, like, he left Saudi Arabia where they are right now. And, I mean, I have no problem with Japan. Japan, they should be cruising through this group. Between second and third, obviously, it will be between Australia and Saudi Arabia. And to maybe, I think maybe Bahrain can play spoiler. I could see them playing spoiler, but I don't think they'll qualify automatically. So, and then for fourth, and then and then the fourth round, yeah, it's a disappointing for Indonesia. I expect I expect them to get something in China, and then yeah. So, yeah, I, I think you know. Actually, I think I just realized. I think this group is exactly the order I predicted in my video. <laughs> exactly the order I predicted. So, <laughs> it's actually interesting <laughs> in that sense. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, Hey, I'm gonna say Bahrain will slightly get forward just because I feel like I just feel like they have a good defense and um, I feel like they're very tough to break down for these teams. So I'm gonna go with them. But yeah, I mean it should be interesting, man. I'm very interested to see how Group C pans out. So that's gonna be pretty much it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this review, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm sure there's probably some talking points we didn't go over, guys. Uh, but you know, like I said, guys, we try to do our best that we can. So please remember to uh, like and subscribe, of course. Make sure you guys follow Brandon on Twitter as well. Leave a link in the description below to his Twitter. And yeah. Thank you guys for watching and peace out.